Please be seated this morning. I only have a few moments. I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Kings. And you, you just feel the Lord working. Who just feels the Lord just doing what he does? I mean, it feels good. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it feels good. And, uh, it's exciting to operate under an open heaven. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, I want to talk to you about making room for miracles. Making room for miracles. Lean over your neighbor and tell him, make room for miracles. In verse 8, it says, Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, so often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. I mean, she must have been a good cook. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And so it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and laid down there. And then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, he stood, she stood before him and he said, she said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. He says, what can I do for you? That's the word from the Lord. What can I do for you? He says, do you want me to speak? on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she said, no, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he called her and he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. Now she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. How many know that this woman was hungry for a miracle? She was hungry for God to move in her womb. And then she said, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. Of which Elijah had told her. And I, I want to just take a few moments to talk to you on the subject of making room for miracles. I think it, it, it's so important to understand the time and the season that we are in right now. Because when we think about seasons of revival, and how many know that's certainly what we're experiencing right now? Revival is spiritual upheaval. Revival is spiritual upheaval. It's like when Jesus went into the temple and he overturned the tables. Who remembers that scripture? And he said, my house shall be what? called a house of prayer. Revival is where things that don't make sense start making sense. Where things that weren't happening, how many know in revival, that's when things start happening. And how many know we are in a season where God wants to begin to make things happen within our life? See, God purposes to, his, God causes his purposes to progress by a sudden and powerful move of his spirit. Revival comes so that the mission of Christ might be fulfilled. And what I want to share with you this morning is that great forward movements of the church are born in the season of awakening. God uses revival, watch this, to accomplish something in a few days that could normally not be achieved in years of normal Christian activity. Did you catch that? In revival, God will accomplish in a few days what we cannot accomplish in weeks of normal Christian activity. How many know the season we are in right now, we are not in a normal season? But how many know revival is in this place? Heaven is open over this place. And when heaven is open, one of the characteristics of revival is speed. Ooh, come on, somebody. Don't flash back on me now. But somebody say speed. speed. 
Listen, brothers and sisters, speed is a major characteristic of the Spirit's power. That whenever the Holy Spirit begins to move, things that were slow become fast. It's one of the characteristics of the anointing. Somebody say the anointing. How many of you believe that the anointing is upon your life? God bless half of you. How many of you believe that the anointing of God is upon your life? Then understand, brothers and sisters, that whether the anointing is, there is speed. There is progress. There is spiritual momentum. Quiet seasons of prayer and plowing. How many know our church has certainly known its quiet seasons? Quiet seasons of prayer and plowing are preparation for seasons of harvest. Write that down. Quiet seasons of prayer and plowing are preparation seasons of harvest. But when harvest comes, and how many know harvest is here? Harvest is now. When harvest comes, it comes with speed and activity. With speed and activity. What, what am I saying to you is this. We know there's heavenly activity. Are you with me? But how many know there's about to be activity here on earth? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in San Diego as it is in heaven. Come on, clap. That was powerful. Clap for the Lord. I believe activity is being released. Revival is speed. According to Amos chapter 9, verse 13, it's been prophetically spoken. Listen to the scripture. Behold, the days are coming when the plowman will overtake the reaper. In other words, the days are coming where... As you're plowing, you will be reaping. And as you're reaping, you will be plowing. In other words, the days are coming when you'll plow and reap and you'll work together at the same time. In the message version, it says this. Yes, indeed, it won't, it won't be long. Someone say, it won't be long. He said, God decrees things are going to happen so fast your head will spin. One thing fast on the heels of another, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, exclamation point. Everywhere you look, blessings. Everywhere you look, blessings. Let me say it again until you get excited. Everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings will pour like wine off the mountains and the hills. And I will make everything right again for my people of Israel. Somebody needs a shout for that promise. I came to tell you that you've, you've been plowing and you have been planting seed. Get ready because your harvest time is here. Heaven is open and it's time for things to start happening fast in your life. I like the part where it said things are going to happen so fast your head is going to spin. But then I like the part where it says keep up. Look at your neighbor and tell him, keep up. See, you, you need to keep up. You need to stay in step with what God is doing. You need to discern the times and the seasons. You need to understand the season your church is in. Now, you might be here this morning and say, you know what, Pastor? I'm not in the best season of my life. But I came to tell you that doesn't matter because you are in a church. You're worshiping it amongst the people that it is their season. And before you know it, the season that's on your neighbor is about to jump on you. All you got to do is wake up and understand that there's a blessing that's getting ready to be poured out in this place. Woo. Someone say, this is my season. But in order to step into the season, guys, we have to discern. We have to understand the times and the seasons. The sons of Issachar were strategic people in Israel. And the Bible says they understood the times and the seasons of what Israel ought to do. Are you understanding that this is a very important season? Are you understanding that this is a very vital season, not only for our church, but for your life? Let me go a little deeper. I only have a few moments to do what I got to do. Somebody say seasons. See, I believe that this season of outpouring, this season of revival is a part of heaven's strategy. And heaven's strategy is not only for my generation, but it's for this third wave generation. I was just reading the other day 
how Christians, young believers who are saved during this season, can never be torn away from the things of God. That there has to be, a, when you're saved in a season of revival, there is an abiding spirit in that person's life. We've said it in Victory Outreach, when you've been born in the fire, you will forever remember the fire that you were born in. You're going to remember the movement of the spirit. You're going to remember the miracles. You're going to remember the open heaven. You're going to remember the breakthroughs. You're going to remember how the chains and the scales fell from your life. Come on, somebody shout and help me preach a little bit this morning. This is the strategy of heaven. This is a season where the blessings are going to be poured out. And you've got to discern it. It's so important that right now every one of us begins to discern the times and the seasons we're in. What I love about the Shunammite woman, which brings me to the story, is the Bible says she was a notable woman. Let me ask you, do we have any notable women here? In other words, yes, right? See, some of you caught it. In other words, you're a woman of substance. You're a woman of understanding. Come on, somebody. She was a notable woman, and she perceived that Elisha was a man of God. She perceived that he was a prophet. She perceived that he was God's man. Now, singles, I'm not going to start preaching about this, but y'all need God's man. But she had insight, faith, discernment. She recognized the man of God. She recognized the work of God. She had the discernment to recognize between spiritual things and worldly things. She was wise. She was understanding. I think there's some men that could learn from a Shunammite woman. Somebody say discernment. And what makes this story so powerful is we see that in her discernment, she made room for God to move. Are you hearing me? She made room for God to move. Touch your neighbor, tell him, you need to make room for God to move. The first point is that she hungered for supernatural power in her life. Verse 10. She hungered for supernatural power. She said, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us build Put a bed there for him, a table, a chair, a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he will come to our house. He can dwell here. How many know that we have to hunger for his power? Hunger for his presence. Hunger for miracles. And those miracles, God is able to give them to a people who hunger. She convinced her husband, come on now. How many know? Come on, she had to have faith to convince her husband to build a room for another man. Now, ladies, if your man wasn't in, in the spirit, you would probably say, man, I don't even got a man cave. And you're trying to hook this. I don't even got a room to watch the Super Bowl in. Well, you're trying to build a, a room for another man. But how many know he wasn't an ordinary man? He was God's man. And she said, I want my house to be filled with the power of God. I want my house to be filled with miracles. I want my house to be filled with unusual power. I want my, come on, somebody. I want the power of God in my home. So she convinces her husband to build this room because there was a hunger and thirst. So I want to say this couple determined to build an addition. And by building, they demonstrated faith for God to do more. I've got a question. How many of you in this season, you're just saying, God, I, I want you to do more. I, I've been serving God for 20 years, but Lord, I'm still not satisfied. I know you can do more. I've been serving God for 10 years, but I'm not satisfied. I know you can do more. She, she, she convinced her husband. They came into agreement for, for God to do more. See, this is what miracle power does for us. 
This is what a movement of the Spirit does for us. You know what it does? It stirs our faith. It stirs our faith. The Bible says she would see this prophet coming in and going out, invite him in to eat. But there was something about the prophet that stirred her faith. There's something about the move of the Spirit that stirs our faith. There's something about prophecy that stirs our faith. There's something about worship and prayer that stirs our faith. Come on, help me a little. Come on, help me a little. There's something about the movement of God. There's something about the house of God that stirs our faith. There's something about in our, in our, in our life that says, you know, I just got to get to the house of God. Because it's the house of miracles and anything can happen and it stirs our faith. It stirs our faith so much we've got to get other people to come to the house of God. So she hungered for supernatural power. The second thing is she made room through personal sacrifice. I see something so powerful in this woman here in that she possessed a hunger and thirst and she was so hungry for God. Watch this. She was willing to do something about it. She didn't want a visitation. She wanted a habitation. She didn't want it to be a season. I love these steps. These are cool. You can come down here. She didn't want it to be a season. She wanted it to be a lifestyle. Who of you this morning said, you have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. Come on, somebody. You've rescued my marriage, and I'm never going back. You've rescued my children, and I'm never going. You've rescued my grandbabies, and I'm never going back. She didn't want a visitation. She wanted a habitation, but she recognized to have a habitation, she needed to sacrifice. She says, let's make a room. Let's. Create something that we don't have. <laughs> Let's bring something that is invisible and make it visible. Let's create a space. Let's begin to bring something to life. Let's, woo, let's birth something. Let's birth something for God. Let's make room for God to move in our life. Amen. See, she caused for something that was not in existence to come into existence. She made something out of nothing through her willingness to sacrifice. Ooh, this is so good. Listen, if you're a visionary, you like this kind of preaching. Let's take what's unseen and make it seen. Let's take what's impossible and make it possible. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, something. The principle of sacrifice, everybody say sacrifice, causes projects to manifest. See, there comes a point in your life where if you want to do more, you're going to have to sacrifice for it. That's something that I've learned. It's a principle that through honor and through sacrifice, great things begin to happen. Through honor built in your life. So this woman, she made room through her personal sacrifice. And then lastly and finally, she made room for miracles to be released. When this woman made this room for the prophet Elisha, what she was doing is setting the stage. Somebody just say, set the stage. Here's what I believe with all my heart. Is if you're blessed with what's happening in our church right now, I came to tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And I'll tell you why. Because we're, we're only setting the stage. We're only laying the foundation. This woman set the stage for miracles to be released. When you sacrifice and you take a step of faith, you set the stage for God to do more when we make room for him. You see, this woman began to see how her giving opened up heaven. And we've been learning this, right? Praise opens heaven. Worship opens heaven. Prayer opens heaven. But how many know giving opens heaven? 
giving opens heaven. So this woman sees that through her giving to the prophet. There's a scripture where Jesus says, if you honor a prophet, you will receive the prophet's reward. So this woman had so much honor. She was a notable woman. She was a smart woman. She was an insightful woman. She was a strong woman of substance. And she recognized, if I make room for the man of God, if I bless the man of God, if I build an addition on my home and that man is blessed, you never know what can happen. So here's this man of God coming in, eating, resting, being refueled. How many of you feel like every time you come to church, you eat, you rest, and you're refueled? How many feel like? And then he says, we got to do something for her. She's been so good to us, man. She makes the best carnitas. I don't know what she was feeding them. Boil, asado, garni asada, home, the tortillas are homemade. We can't. It, it, you see, it's a principle of the kingdom. It's a principle of the kingdom. We're not thieves. He says, I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. We're not thieves. And the prophet said, what can we do for her? Can we go to the king? You know, I got a connection. He's on, I got him on speed dial. Because, you know, I'm the man up in the temple, in the, in, the, in the castle. He says, no, no, I don't need nothing from the king. I don't need nothing from the earthly king. I need something from the king of kings. And then Gehazi says, you know, she doesn't have a son. She hasn't been able to bear children. King can't give her a child. But how many know God can? God can. She needed a supernatural miracle from God. And when I think about this building as they come, and I think about this expansion, how many know we're making room? We're making room for the Lord. We're, we're, we're believing that God's house, and as we make room in God's house, we're believing that Victor Arch San Diego is going to see the greatest harvest of souls we have ever seen in our 35-year history. Yeah.